Welcome to Eroticism in Southeast Asian Religious Art. Eroticism is a prominent theme found throughout the history of India and its counterparts. Movements in literature, architecture, and poetry contribute to the different depictions of erotic art. The symbols are not meant to provoke perverse thoughts, but instead are associated with divine forces and even auspiciousness. The sensuous and the sacred are not opposed, they are one, and the sensuous is seen as an integral part of the sacred. In the ancient art, erotic symbols are weaved onto the walls of holy sites, statues of human groups, as a way to address feelings of pleasure in human life. Cravings, known as tanha, are seen as the root of a concept known as dukkha, which is Sanskrit for suffering. This Buddhist philosophy associates cravings to those of kama, which are sensual pleasures. In the five precepts, a system of morality followed by the most Buddhists, the third precept refrains followers from committing sexual misconduct as it is considered a form of earthly and material pleasure that is not encouraged. It is even forbidden for Buddhist monks and nuns to engage in sexual activity. Thus, promiscuity and sensual, te sexual temptation is seen as a negative expression of Buddhist values and is a hindrance to attaining enlightenment. Nevertheless, erotic art is still found in Buddhist history as seen in the following pieces. This Mithuna sculpture from the Gandharan region is a freestanding figure made from clay and represents a male and a female intertwined in each other's embrace. The statue draws similarities to Greek and Roman classical art, specifically in the draped clothing, due to the ensuing influences of the great Roman Empire. The woman standing on the left of the man is a character often found in Hindu art. Thus, this sculpture shows evidence that Buddhist empires were adopting representations from other religions and kingdoms. A Mithuna is a couple embracing one another, symbolic of love or marriage, and is not to be mistaken with Mithunas, which are more explicit sculptures representing figures in intercourse. The painting depicts Akala a Buddhist protector god also known as the immovable, vanquishing evil while in a sexual embrace with, with Vishvavarjri, his partner. Akala is a wrathful and powerful deity serving as a protector of Dharma, a religious and moral law governing individual conduct in both Buddhism and Taoism. Originating as a minor deity, Akala rose to prominence as a destroyer of evil, the vibrant imagery showcases the coexistence of eroticism and protection against evil, providing a direct contrast between godly protection and the taboo act of sex. This painting originates from Kathmandu, Nepal, a holy site for Buddhists. In Buddhism, concepts of prajna, wisdom, upaya, skill, and karuna, compassion, must be fused together as one in order to achieve enlightenment. This fusion can be expressed visually through symbols of sexuality, such as yabyum, represented in this painting. In Tibetan, yabyum means father-mother. It is a representation of a male deity in sexual embrace with his female consort. The female deity is generally represented sitting on the male deity's lap as a sign of being protected. The masculine form represents upaya, skill, and the feminine form represents prajna, the wisdom. In Hinduism, sexuality is often embraced as a religious rite and pathway to a balanced life. Eroticism is considered a major symbol due to the importance of the pursuit of kama. Kama, one of the four main purashatras, or goals of salvation, alongside dharma, artha, and moksha, is the pursuit of desire and pleasure. In addition, one of the main Hindu divinities, Shiva, is associated to immense divine sexual energy and therefore erotic symbols are often combined with Shiva's worship and found at temples that honor him. Hindu Kama arts were popularized in South Asia around the 8th to 10th century AD. Couples in myths copulation are depicted explicitly on the walls of temples and on the pages of manuscripts intertwined with poetry and storytelling to depict the pious quality of mastering sexuality in everyday life. Tantrism, a religious practice that considers sexual acts as a ritual to create divine connection, 
has strong influences on the Kama genre. This sculpted scene can be found at the site of the famous Kandariya Mahadeva temple. The temple is one of the largest of the Kajurahu complex built during the Chandala dynasty, an era considered to be the peak of erotic art. These statues are forms of artistic expression requested by the aristocratic pat patrons of the time to draw in the attention of the pilgrims and play a part in the temple experience. It is even said that the couples represented were members of elite society and even royal family members in order to exemplify sex as an auspicious act. This statue represents a couple, the man standing capsized on his head while the woman is symmetrically opposite her partner while in the midst of copulation. There are two female servants on the side assisting the woman in her erotic position suggesting that the couple are of elevated social status. This scene, along with the multiple erotic scenes at this temple, are meant to display the kama incorporated in everyday life. The Mithuna couple, a recurring figure in Hindu temples, shows a man and a woman holding each other in a sensuous embrace, peering seductively into each other's eyes. This particular statue is part of the Shiva-dedicated Linga Raja temple built by King Jajati Kishari. Located in the capital of Odisha in eastern India, the temple is the epitome of Kalinga architecture from the medieval age. The god Shiva is symbolic of strong sexual energy, and therefore this temple carries a lot of erotic imagery. The characters are adorned with detailed jewelry, showing elitism and prosperity, and the female curvatures in the waist and breast emphasize the woman's sexual qualities. The pair are meant to celebrate achieving pleasure from their union. This sculpture is part of the Boram Deo Temple honoring Shiva. The Boram Deo Temple is part of a complex group of temples built entirely out of stone during the Kalachuri period of the 10th to 12th century. The Nagvanshi kings were inspired by court poetry called Kavya, as well as the art of Kama Sutra that preached the importance of sexual expertise. This scene represents polyamorous intercourse between six individuals. The characters are intertwined in various positions, making it difficult to distinguish each one, alluding to the mythicality of sensuous acts. The sculpture breaks the bounds of monogamous heterosexuality and reinforces the pleasure aspect of Kama. This chariot wheel is part of the Konark Sun Temple. Taking a closer look, there are a plethora of miniature erotic engravings. The main attribute of the piece is the use of geometry. The symmetrical feature of the chariot and circular element points towards the essential need for balance when it comes to the worshipper's sexual life. Like all the elements of life, everything must exist in moderation and the chariot is a beacon of it. The Kama Sutra was composed around the 3rd century by philosopher Fatsyayana Malanaga in North India. The name Kama Sutra is composed of Kama and Sutra. Kama meaning the pursuit of pleasure and Sutra a collection of literary, literary rules. The Kama Sutra is another piece of evidence that demonstrates the importance of intimacy and sexuality within Hindu lifestyle. In this piece, Vatsyayana writes about the journey towards finding a lover, engaging in adultery, relations with a mistress, and positions during intercourse. However, upon translation in the 19th century, the Kama Sutra was completely taken out of context and only the most explicit parts were highlighted, resulting in the loss of credibility or rather its sanctity. The various positions portrayed in Kama Sutra, named as Bandas Mithunas were derived from yoga and are associated with wellness. The painting, dating back to the 17th century, depicts a courtly looking couple locked in a sexual position. It is one of the many miniature paintings found in manuscripts that narrate scriptures on Kama and other folklore stories. The piece is painted in Bikaner style, which refers to paintings from the court of Bikaner in the Rajput Empire. The Rajput Empire is known for cultivating poetic stories about love, passion, and loyalty, 
This painting implies that couples can achieve prosperity and enlightenment through engaging in sexual acts. This is another Beaconer miniature painting from the Rajput Empire. Painted by an anonymous artist, this piece is an act of denouncement. An outraged husband murders his unfaithful wife and her lover. The imagery here represents the ways in which sexual temptation can also have a negative effect as opposed to Hindu teachings. While sexual expression is encouraged to add spiritual value to one's life, when abused in the context of a marriage, it can be extremely detrimental and leads to feelings of anger and outbursts of jealousy or rage. The message here is to forbid the act of adultery since the Rajputs believed in fidelity and the sanctity of marriage. It is also reflective of, of a patriarchal culture since the wife is villainized as the adulterer deserving of her fate. This piece, Erotic Episodes Initiated in the Presence of the Gods, represents humans engaging in copulation provoked by a divine being as a vehicle for spiritual blessing. Hindu teachings assert that enjoying eroticism is an ideal way for humans to be closer to God. This idea is especially present in folklore stories on Kamadev, the Hindu god of love and desire. Kamadev, painted in blue, can be found twice in the painting holding a bow and arrow. The colored woodblock print depicts China Masta, the goddess of self-sacrifice decapitated. Blood gushes out of her neck in streams, consumed by her decapitated head and her two attendants. The goddess stands over a copulating couple. They are the deities of love and desire, the god Kama and goddess Rati. This piece suggests that she transcends desire while also being fundamentally supported by it. Goddess Rati is shown on top of Kama, signaling the superiority of the female principle within Tantra. This vivid imagery also points towards the intertwining of sex, life, and death as the core of human experience. A famous Bengali text also depicts Chinamasta's sacrifice as a metaphor for the motherland being decapitated by the British attempting to preserve her vitality by drinking her own blood. Chinamasta is a symbol, symbol of heroic fearlessness and self-sacrifice. The depiction of eroticism in tantric religion and art made in the late 19th century counteracts the sexual prudery of the Christian West and contributed to negative perceptions of the Hindu religion on behalf of the colonizers. With that, we've come to the end of our gallery viewing where we showcase representations of eroticism across Hindu and Buddhist religions and time. Thank you for visiting our exhibition.